Richard says, is it permissible to read scriptures of other religions with the objective of giving da'wah to non-Muslims? First of all, our scholars from the Salaf say that it is wrong to give da'wah to people through their scriptures. The Prophet did not do this, alayhi salatu wasalam. The companions did not do this, and the tabi'een, and the tabi'i tabi'een. They used to call them with, to the Qur'an and to the Sunnah. Full stop. So to go and study their scriptures and call them to Islam through their scriptures, this is not something done by the Salaf. Now, the Prophet himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, saw Umar ibn al-Khattab once reading a paper. So he said, what are you reading, O Umar? So Umar said, O Prophet of Allah, this is a page from the Torah, the Old Testament. And I'm just curious, looking and reading it. So the Prophet snatched it from his hand and said angrily that if Musa, peace be upon him, were alive, he would not be able to do anything but follow me. And he prevented Umar from reading it. Now, some scholars said that this was in the beginning of Islam, so that he would not be confused and things would not be mixed in his mind about Islam and other religions. But later on, the Prophet ordered Zayd ibn Thabit, may Allah be pleased with him, to learn Hebrew, and he learned it in 13 days. And he used to ask him to look whether what the Jews are saying and quoting from their books is correct or lying, as in the case of the punishment of a, a, an adulterer, an adulteress, where they had uh, put tar on their faces and made them sit backwards on mules and they started taking them round Medina and they claimed that this was the punishment for those who commit the act of fornication. And this was not the case because it was stoning as mentioned in the Old Testament, in the Torah. So Abdullah ibn Salam, who was one of the rabbis who accepted Islam, said that they are lying and then the story is, is well known. So scholars now have different opinions. Some say, yes, it can be possible that we learn their scriptures in order to reply to their uh, lies, to their doubts, to their confusion, and clarify it to them. Others say, no, you're not allowed to do this. We have the Quran, we have the Sunnah. Who cares what happens in their religion? We invite them to our religion. If they like it, alhamdulillah. If they don't, let them stay with their religion. There's no compulsion and no oppression. Let them believe what they, whatever they believe. And it seems that the most authentic opinion is that only those who are knowledgeable in Islam, and I mean students of knowledge who know Arabic, who know the Quran well, understand the hadith, have sound aqidah, have studied books of Aqidah and know exactly what Islam is all about, and not only hearsay or logic, but rather actual knowledge of Aqidah and of Islam, Islamic knowledge, only those are qualified to look into the books when needed of other religions. Nowadays, unfortunately, we see so many youngsters in their, early, in their teens, and some are in their early 20s, dressed like the Honorable Sheikh Ahmed Didat, may Allah have mercy on his soul. He was a great da'i to Islam, one of the greatest. Eloquent, fluent, he was like a nice breeze coming. And he used to give da'wah, he was successful. So now we get clones of him wearing the same suit, wearing the same kufi or uh, the cap, 
and doing the same form of dawah, which might be effective, which might be good, but if you check their Islamic knowledge, you'll find that it is zero. So they memorize a few things here and there, but entirely speaking, or holistically speaking, they have zero knowledge in Islam. And this is not right. They must be strongly founded in Islamic knowledge, in Aqidah, in Quran, in, in the Hadith, and then be able to study, to give da'wah, and their da'wah should not be based on their books, on the other scriptures. Rather, it should be originating from Islam, from Quran, and from the Sunnah itself. And Allah Azza wa knows best.